This lockdown is killing me, as I'm sure it's killing everybody else for every business there is. Um, but today we will be talking about how to kind of get back into it and how to deal with process serving in your business during all this craziness. It's never going to end apparently. We, we get a lot of people that have been asking how to deal with this and what to do during this pandemic and how to maintain your business and maintain clients and move forward. Well, I, I've got a, a few ideas for some. I don't have answers and ideas for all those questions, but we do have some ways you can kind of mitigate some of this issue um, moving forward. Uh, these are things I've been doing and I've been recommending to others to maybe maybe do during your downtime, which there seems to be a tremendous amount of and it's getting extremely old. But that's something that's out of our control, so we just need to accept it and just move forward the best we can. One thing to consider while we're trying to navigate through this is the court. I know several courts are not open, they're not accepting affidavits of service, so if you can't turn in an affidavit of service, what's the point of serving somebody, right? Makes no sense. So you need to find out if your courts, your jurisdiction is accepting affidavits of service. Mine currently is um, by email, by fax. Uh, I don't even know about, maybe dropping them up. I don't know, I haven't been in there. Um, but I know some places are opening up for that. Some courthouses are opening up for that. Others have not yet. So first and foremost, see if that's even an option because if you can't give an affidavit of service, what's the point of serving the papers, right? If your court is accepting them via email, fax, whatever, once you have found that out, then you can get back to work. As long as your clients are feeding you that stream of services and you have them to do, which I'm sure most of you do. I mean, I know I've got some left over from when all this nonsense began. And so I have them still to do. Sure, I've had to get new court dates on them, but they're still sitting there waiting for me since they've been on hold. A few things I've began doing is kind of the obvious things we've been dealing with. Your hand sanitizer, make sure you got some in the car, use it frequently. I mean, we do anyway, right? I do. Anyway, a lot of these people I am dealing with are well, I'll just leave it at that. But I've been using hand sanitizer from day one. I'm just gonna keep using it. That's nothing new for, for me and the way I deal with my business. Next thing is your mask. I mean, we've been wearing them around. I, I may not have been the best at wearing my mask. It's getting old. I know I'm not the only one who feels that way. Sanitizing wipes. It's just something I've kind of kept in my car from the beginning anyway. Wipe your steering wheel down, your computer if you have one in your car, your phone, you know. Anything you're gonna touch, your door handle, just wipe that stuff down. And once, this is just stuff I kind of did anyway, because, I don't know, I'm not a weirdo with like germs, but I just, you know, icky people sometimes, I don't know. I just, I wipe stuff down. In, in a way, I have found that this kind of has made things a little bit easier, uh, the pandemic, in some ways, being that people that have been furloughed uh, are at home. The stay at home order, I mean, the people that kind of follow that, I've been lucky enough to have been able to, to serve them. I mean, they've been at home. Another thing I found to do while we've been down with all this pandemic stuff is I have been, I've had a little bit more time to research people. So Facebook search, Google search. I've just had a little bit more time to put into the background, you know, the, the behind the scenes part of this job. Um, oh, by the way, notice my different surroundings. I got my office finished in my home. Uh, okay, back to what we were talking about. You, I found I have a little bit more time to look into people and, and track them down a little bit more and not focus so much on serving them and spend a little bit more time on finding them before I head out in my car to look for them, if that makes sense. So that's been something you can do while you're at home. And I know we're kind of opening back up. We're kind of past that now, but it, for those of you whose courts haven't opened to accept affidavits yet, um, this, is, this is something you can do to take up your time. Also, I have found that Serve Manager has put out an article. So it's a guide to safely resuming process of service. So it's kind of what I've already been talking about, but it's got a lot of good safety tips in it. It's got um, different ideas for you and your business to protect you and your clients from any of this virus. Um, this is extremely beneficial information. I will link this article in the description below. When you have a minute, click on it, check it out, read it. Uh, it's, it's good information and, and it's stuff we should be doing at all times, not just pandemic times. One thing I'm going to start doing and I'm gonna start it right here on this video and that's reading comments. I've been getting a bunch of comments uh, on my videos. A lot of people asking me questions about stuff I may have not have covered. The first one is gonna be from Chris Ames. 
He said, love the videos. He's aspiring to serve papers and was wondering, can you get clients before you have your license? Then follow up getting your license to do the job or do you need your license first? Okay, Chris, so on, I know on that first video I had mentioned a license. Um, I've got this question quite a bit because of what I said there and what, what, what I meant there, and I should have been more clear is, the license I was talking about is your business license, just your license through the city to conduct business. Um, in Utah, you don't need any kind of certification whatsoever to serve court process. You simply need to be 18 years old or older and not part of either party in the litigation. So that opens it up to most people can, can serve, right? Uh, so in your state, you may need a constable's, like a constable's license or, or or be a police officer or something like that. In, in that case, yes, you would need to get that, you'd need to get that certification or license or whatever. You'd need to get that first before you served papers. So to go and obtain clients, I don't see why you would need that license to go and obtain clients. You would need that license or certification to serve process. Next question is gonna be from Jim Wheeler. And Jim, yeah, this one I hear a hundred times a day. Big mistake, I have fixed it since. But Jim commented, seriously, the music is annoying. I can't even finish the video because of it. Yes, on my very first video, I made that huge mistake of way too loud and annoying music. Sorry, lessons learned. I've fixed it since then. Sorry, Jim, but thanks for watching. Next comment, Mikey B. By Kim commented, good video. So getting the clients part, how exactly does that happen? I go to place, do I go to places and just say, Hey, I'm a process server. Do you have any papers to be served? That's the confusing part. Okay, uh, Mikey B. Okay, um, yeah, that's kind of how you do it. I just went into various businesses and just said, hey, I'm a, I'm a process server. Are you guys looking for a new server? And you'd be surprised how many times they were like, well, as a matter of fact, we are. Go in there with that confidence to say, this is who I am, this is what I do, and answer any questions they might have. But yeah, you just simply walk in and say, this is a service I offer, are you interested? All right, next next comment, Rose Dubois. Dubois, I hope I'm saying that right, commented, thanks for the video. How do you go about approaching businesses about their services and negotiating prices with them? So that's real similar to the last uh, comment I had just read. Uh, Rose, what you do is, just like I said, you go in and you let them know who you are, what you do. Uh, when it comes to negotiating prices, typically they're gonna ask how much do you charge and then you decide however much you want to charge and break it down. For a, a, a simple affidavit, to serve an affidavit, you're gonna want X amount. You can decide if you want to charge for attempts. Have this pre-thought out before you go in and, and offer your services because yeah, they're probably gonna ask that. The price is usually a big, a big driving factor when people want to do business. Same for you and same for them. Those are going to be the comments for today. Um, I will continue to do this on my videos where if you've got a question, if I don't directly answer it in the comments, I will answer it here and I may answer it in both places. So, but before we go, as always, I want to thank Serve Manager. Not only do they sponsor my videos, but they sent me this pretty sweet hat that I got to be honest, has been my favorite for quite a while now. Wear it everywhere. Uh, thank you, Serve Manager. Guys, head over to their website. Click on the link in the description below to head to their website. It is an affiliate link where it does give me a small kickback for you guys subscribing to their service. I greatly appreciate it. I love doing these videos and I want to continue doing these videos for you guys, the people who have been watching it. I have been considering putting together a course that I would sell. Um, on process serving and ultimately I've decided against that because I want to do these videos for you guys and because I enjoy doing them. Something I've been thinking about and ultimately decided to continue giving this to you guys for free. And all I ask is that you check out Serve Manager. Um, guys, that's all I have today. I appreciate all the support you guys give me. Let's just keep on serving those papers. Guys, have a great day and good luck on your services. I am out of here, see ya.